Hi everyone, Teacher Peter here. I'm really excited to be here. I'm really looking forward to us meeting together as a church again. So we've been going through the parables of Jesus in the last few months. So we just finished that and I hope you've learned something. So we are starting a new adventure, a new series, a new storyline about Moses. I hope you're going to be plugged in. I hope you're going to learn something. So this week, our very first person to introduce us to the first lesson is none other than Daniel. He did an awesome job last week. So this week, this Sunday, it's Daniel who's taking us through the very first lesson. I hope you will enjoy. I hope you will stay safe and be blessed as you watch this. So one thing that the story of Moses teaches us is that God has big plans. God knows about the past and God knows about the future and he knows about you and me. So if you're an all-star, you'll remember this song. I hope you'll join in, and especially I hope you'll do the actions. And if you're not an all-star, you can still learn the song. It's a great song. We'll start off slow and we'll get faster. My God is taller than a tower, stronger than an army. Wiser than the wisest can tell My God is faster than a rocket Sees further than a telescope And made all the universe as well He's warmer than the burning sun Closer than the closest friend More loving than anyone can be And he knows about the past He knows about the future And he also knows all about me My God is taller than a tower Stronger than an army, wiser than the wisest can tell. My God is faster than a rocket, sees further than a telescope, and made all the universe as well. He's warmer than the burning sun, closer than the closest friend, more loving than anyone can be. And he knows about the past, he knows about the future, and he also knows all about me. Let's do it fast now. My God is taller than a tower, stronger than an army, wiser than the wise can tell. My God is faster than a rocket, is further than a telescope, and made all the universe as well. He's warmer than the burning sun, closer than the closest friend, more loving than anyone can be. And he knows about the past, he knows about the future, and he also knows all about me. And he also knows all about me. again and for those who don't know me my name is Daniel. For the last four months I've been at home. What have you been doing? We made a board game to stop us being bored. That was really fun and this week we went to the national park and we saw six lions. This we are starting a new series about Moses' Moses' life. Moses was a boy who was born in the time when the fair, when the Israelites lived in Egypt. Do you remember Joseph when his brothers and family came to live in Egypt? The Pharaoh gave them good land. Well, this was hundreds of years later, and the Pharaoh never knew it, Joseph and made the Israelites slaves under him. 
Moses' mother tried to hide Moses for three months until she could hide him no more and put him in a basket, waterproofed, and put him in the reeds of the River Nile. His old sister Miriam went to watch rocks to see what would happen to him. An unexpected thing happened. The Pharaoh's daughter found Moses in the basket and found him crying and saw that he needed milk. Then Miriam came out of the side of the riverbank and said, I know somebody who can care for him and feed him. Until she brought her own mother. The princess told his mother, care for him until he is old enough to come and live in the palace with the king. God had a plan for, for Moses and did not let the devil kill him. Now I've told the story in my own words. Here is a clip to help you understand more. It may not have looked like a promising future after Joseph was rejected by his own brothers and sold into slavery. But God had a plan that included mercy and a mighty deliverance. He raised Joseph out of slavery and into a powerful position over all of Egypt and revealed to him things that no one else knew. When famine came, Joseph was prepared and many lives were saved, including the brothers who had once despised him. With open arms, Joseph received his father Jacob, his brothers, and all their families. They lived happily together in Egypt, enjoying the blessings of God's great deliverance. But time passed, and a new pharaoh rose to power who did not know Joseph or remember how God had delivered them from famine and certain death. Instead, he felt threatened by the people of Israel, who were now growing in numbers and strength. Out of fear and evil in his heart, this new king forced the people of Israel into slavery and did everything he could to stop them from becoming a mighty people. Yet another pharaoh attempted to destroy the people of Israel by demanding that every son born to the Hebrews be killed. Throw them into the Nile River, he commanded. He would rather murder them than watch them continue to live in the goodness and blessings of God. Little did this king know that he sought to destroy a nation of people God had promised would be great. God was preparing his people for one of the greatest deliverance stories of all time. During the time of Pharaoh's evil order, a Hebrew woman gave birth to a baby boy. She named him Moses. Seeing that he was no ordinary child, and his life was already marked with God's favor and mercy, Moses' mother hid him from Pharaoh's men as long as she could. When she could no longer keep him hidden, she devised a hopeful plan. She built a strong basket and coated it with tar and pitch so that it would float like a tiny little boat. She then placed baby Moses inside, took him down to the Nile River, and hid him in the tall grass along the water's edge. As she watched him drift down the river toward an unknown future, tears filled her eyes. She was sad to let him go, but her hope was in God. Moses' sister Miriam ran along the riverbank, watching the basket as it swiftly drifted downstream. She anxiously looked ahead, hoping for a miracle to save her little brother's life. The basket soon broke away from the bulrushes and plants, and came into view of an Egyptian princess and her maidens who were bathing in the river. When the princess noticed the curious basket floating in the water, she sent one of her maidens to fetch it. What a surprise to see such a beautiful child looking up at her. His cries melted her heart. 
Immediately she recognized it was a Hebrew baby boy. I will raise him as my own, she said, as she held on to the child protectively. So Moses began a life of privilege and pleasure among the royals in Egypt. But one day he would give it all up to gain a treasure that only God could give. So before we pray, we're going to sing these two songs. The first song means, there is no one like you, God. And let's remember that there's no one like God and no one has such amazing plans as God has for our lives. And the second song is saying, yes, Lord. I'm saying yes, Lord. So let's say yes to God and his plans as we come and worship him. Hakuna mongu kama wewe Hakuna mongu kama wewe Hakuna mongu kama wewe Hakuna mongu kama wewe Listen again, Hakuna Hakuna Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day. And Lord, thank you that you have a plan for each and every one of us. Please help us trust you and stay in your plan. Please help us be, keep us safe from evil people and the devil. Please help COVID-19 to end. And please help people have enough to eat. Amen. I hope you've learned something from the story. Keep safe. Until next time. Bye.